morning, everybody. Welcome to Board Game Smorgasbord. I'm Tom Basil. I'm Joey Evans. I'm Z Garcia. Yes. And this is the barest of bones day for us. It really is. Mike Delisio's on vacation. Done. Aww. Chris and Wendy went to a convention in D.C. Ow. Uh Roy is out today. Ooh. Kenny's not here right now. I know. Ah. This place is haunted. That's how yeah. scary it is. Yeah. I'm kind of scared. Little Joey bit. is running scared? the thing from his chair. I am running everything from right here. Captain Kirk, so <laughs> lots of mistakes. We have that zero so far. We have. We're killing it. <laughs> I'm proud of you so far. Thanks, buddy. It will be short-lived. It will be. <laughs> <laughs> We've been playing live games all week. I hope that you've been enjoying that. Yes. Or, or not next week. A week from today, we're doing the 30... Our marathon. Uh, I'm getting ready for it. We finally worked at the Times yesterday. It yep. took a while, but we got it done. 30 um, hours. It's going to start at 8 a.m. on Thursday and go to 6 p.m. Friday. This is Eastern Standard Times. Yeah. With two two-hour breaks in the middle of that. Yeah, For eating. Yeah, mostly. A lot. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> what did you do to him today? Did you like put an extra quarter this morning? What? <laughs> <laughs> I did. All right, so well, let's get started here. We're just going to jump right into the show with the news. Do it, Joey. Press there the thing. I'm proud of you, Joey. The only way to win is to cheat. That's ah. Um. Hey, so we don't have a lot of news for you because, uh, well, Mike's the news guy, so... <laughs> That's it. There's no news. So we're going to talk about some Dice Tower news, about some upcoming events and so things that you know that are coming. So yep. okay. the cruise, Dice Tower cruise, opened April 1st, which was this Monday, and lots of rooms sold, and there's still rooms left if you want to come. <clears throat> that is, if you've never been on the cruise, it's in the Caribbean, and yes. I almost said Mediterranean, which would be... Get Pe some, people go too excited over that. <laughs> Caribbean, yeah. Uh, we're heading to some cool stops. We're bringing the entire Dice Tower Library. The entire Dice Tower gang comes there. <clears throat> it is a full week. It's on one of, not the, one of the biggest ships in the world. It is. Um, mm -hmm. There's an ice rink. Yeah, and it's just, that it's amazing, me. right? Yeah, you can skate, you can... I still can't skate. Uh, laser tag, skate room, laser watch tag? shows. Yeah, we missed that this past <clears throat> year. But they I did have laser, laser tag. tag. Are you laser tag? No. Did what? you know there was laser tag? No, I didn't. They turned the ice skating rink into a laser tag arena. Is oh it official, or did you like find some kids that had laser tag stuff, and you're like, hey, come No, on. no, I did it like a couple years ago. Oh, I didn't know they had that. With the okay. same kids. They were there. They're, <laughs> they're adults now. <laughs> <laughs> they, come back from, they come back at camp. I'm like, you're taking this way too seriously. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whenever I did paintball, Oh. There was always like a couple guys who would show up in full camo oh, with serious. stuff yeah, and yeah, other guns, guys, and I was like, yeah. "Is this? This is gonna be terrible. I'm not gonna win." And then I realized paintball guns aren't that accurate, so it all works out. That's true. <laughs> hmm. um, anyhow, so that's Dice Tower Cruise. It's coming in January, mm -hmm. but you <clears> want to <throat> sign up now. Dice Tower East is the next thing that is actually going to sell out soon. Yep. So don't delay too long on getting your tickets. That's in Orlando. It's gonna be fantastic at the Carib Royale. And, um, yeah, I got my new uh, new dexterity game section I'm excited about. That's right. We have a bunch of really cool full table games. Always a fun thing to stop by and play a few minutes. Then Those you, are fun just to stop you as you keep, walk in yeah, the hall. It's like, uh, it yeah. feels museum-esque. You walk in by and you're like, oh, what is that? And I play a little it bit. It does. Flick something or shoot something, and then we can keep going to your lunch or whatever. Yeah, I do like those. And then finally, in September, the World Series of Board Gaming had just announced that you can now just go <coughs> for open gaming. Oh. You can buy an open gaming ticket. Mm. Dice Hour West is running this section of it. So you can go just for the weekend, Saturday, uh, is it the weekend? You can go the last two days. I don't remember what the days are that you can go, but mm -hmm. there's going to be various days you can go, different pricing for tickets. So you go check that out with a big chunk of the Dice Hour West library. Yeah. I'll tell you this. Some <clears throat> of the Dice Tower Library, Dice Tower West Library, is bigger than almost every other convention's library. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like the one that they took to the World Series. It is, is enormous. It, it's a huge amount. So if you just want to go hang out in Vegas and play open games, so think of it as Dice Tower West Mini, and then in the background there's all these, you can go to this and then maybe be like, huh, I'll pay to enter this little tournament here if you want to do that stuff on the side. And crush some fools. Also, the Dice Tower Gang is going to be there. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So that's World Series, 
WSBGVegas.com. Mike Heller is conveniently putting all the links Mike in Heller's the a beast, chat. okay? Mike Heller crushes fools. He does. At World Series Board Gaming. He's not going, is he? I, have, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> I actually was really sad about not being able to make it this year. <sighs> Who was? Mike, Mike Heller, the I crusher know. of souls. Yes, he I'm is. still trying to convince Jason to go in there and play on behalf of the Dice Tower. Oh, Didn't man. Jason used to go to the... No, that one World Board Gaming Championship. Yeah, and he was. He, and I he, think he he eventually stopped because the competition was because too fierce. He intentionally got third. <laughs> he crumbled. He crumbled <laughs> he under did. the pressure, <laughs> as I expect someone else to crumble under their pressure today. I'm going. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. Though. I'm ready. I'm proud of you so far. I'm ready. I'm ready. So that's Dice Tower events that are coming out. And, of course, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we have a marathon coming up next yep. week. And, of course, lots of different videos going through. We got a live game today, which we have not even put the name of it on because we're not 100% sure what it is yet. What is it? Number one will shock you. <laughs> um, so that's stuff that's coming up. I guess I could give one interesting piece of board game-related news. Oh, okay. I just read Fantasy Flight. ANS is actually like two weeks ago. I just read it now, though. They announced that Star Wars Unlimited is their best-selling product ever, already. What does that mean? It means it beat Marvel, the LCG. Marvel Champions? Marvel Champions. No, sir. And what? X-Wing. No, sir. And Arkham. No, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> but no. <laughs> really? Does that mean, like, per capita? I'm not using that term right. I know, I like, you're in the that amount way. of time it's been out? I don't clearly, know what that it means. hasn't sold better than X-Wing. But that's what they—that's what their you know press what I mean? release says. Yeah, that's well, their press release might have been written by one of the many Darths: <laughs> Darth Vader, okay. Darth Sidious, Darth Jar Binks. I gotta say though, it's it's really it's really I I I, I had hoped. There was rumors for a while that Jar Jar Binks would be I uh, know it would have been a master, master stroke oh, of storytelling. That would have been great. Misa have been playing you the whole time, son. <laughs> Misa actually evil. I think he would have changed his voice though. He'd Misa, like, uh, no, no, Misa he, about to wreck you. No, I think he would have been like Misa, Misa. Okay, guys, here's what's up. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. Anyhow, uh, yeah, no, it's it's really. I tell you what, for as much. Hate as people throw out LCGs or, or CCGs, I mean, and TCGs. This is their year, man. You're not kidding. They got altered coming out soon at some point. Oh, yeah. You can play that, right? Like, that's like Gen Con. Really? That quickly? Lorcana and uh, the best selling game of all time, apparently, Star Wars Unlimited. <laughs> that blows my mind. There's one other thing that's coming out that just got announced that I'm excited about. Little United. Little United. <laughs> little United <laughs> we'll talk about that in <laughs> next week. What is that? Oh, <laughs> man. Not going to mention DC United? Ooh. Superman versus Thanos. <sighs> that's going to be a fight. Who you got? Thanos. Superman holds back. Yeah, so. he does. How many stones do you give him, though, Thanos? Like, no stones, straight up. So oh, then Superman. Okay. All right. All right, anyway. Where are we that, talking about Thanos' stones? It's <laughs> good news. Press the button. Press okay. the button. Wait, wait, wait. Press the button. Happy breakfast, everyone. I'm soon to be moving my board game collection, not very far, from one room in the house to another. But it has given me a really good opportunity to actually sort of take a step back, look what's on the shelves and what's just down there, sort of next to a shelf, and really go, well, do I need this in the collection? It sort of helped me go, well, actually, that's sat on the shelf for so long. Do I want to really lug that through to another room? Or shall I just try and sell it on a Facebook marketplace or on Board Game Geek or in some sort of second-hand sale market thing? get a bit of money for it that I can maybe put into other games. I've sort of sold off around 30 to 50 games so far, and it means there's definitely gaps on the shelf, but not really in the experiences. I've got Seven Wonders or I've got Sushi Go. If you're wanting a card drafting experience, I've got those two, which are sort of lighthearted or a bit more serious, plays with good player count ranges. I don't really need many others, so a few others that were in the collection are now gone. Actually, taking a step back and thinking, if I have to move this collection, do I really want to move all of it? Maybe that's a good way of you looking at your collection and doing the same, because it certainly sort of drove me to do it. 
If I've got to move all of these, do I really want them all on the shelf sort of thing? But what's your tactic to sort of streamline your collection? Because, well, some tips of getting rid of some other games for me, that might be quite helpful to hear. Let us know in the comments section below and enjoy the rest of your breakfast. Item. Hey, we're back. I was supposed to say top three. Why did you cut it before the intro? I don't know what's happening! Yeah, what <laughs> Go back you, and play the intro. Wait, how did you know he was done? How did you just guess at him being done? I got anxiety. <laughs> I'm no longer proud of you. He was winding down. That's yeah, a first end. strike. No. There's a... There's a oh. do, 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 top three. <laughs> All right, today's top three. Jeez, I'm sad. Let's, I'm let's, really sad. Let's, 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 you turn here. Okay. Top three saddest moments in movies. Okay. Why would you pick this, Vassal? Because I like talking about something like this. So, a couple Why? things before... What's wrong with you? I was up last night looking through this, like, finding... Just waterworks. And just, like... <laughs> like not feeling great. I wasn't that, crying, but right. I wasn't feeling great remembering all these scenes from some sad movies. So a couple things about oh, this particular list. Man. Straight up spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled on movies, I mean, we'll mention the name of the movie first. And then you can... And then you, you know. can, oh, I didn't see that, then jump out, okay? Secondly, there <clears> might be some <throat> things that trigger different people based on what's happening in this. I can't really say that without spoiling. Also, I don't know what everyone's is, so just keep that in mind. All right. Yeah, that's... All right, well, you don't like doing this. We'll get yours out of the way first. What's your number three? I'm picking. <laughs> You're picking now? <laughs> yeah, I got like one, two... You mean play a bumper? Three, no, don't do anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> that's where they play the girl from Ipanema. Yes! Oh, if I had that button. Okay, I'm going to go with... Hmm? 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 Man, he's getting really sad. I know. You're like pretty joking. Okay, I'm going to go with here. Arrival as my number three. Ooh. Wait, The Arrival? No, not The Arrival. That's some <laughs> crappy alien movie I know, with I was like, like what? Charlie <laughs> Sheen or whatever. That's not that bad. The movie's okay. No, Arrival from Denis Villeneuve of Dune fame. Oh, I don't think I've seen that. You've never seen Arrival? It's an amazing no. movie. It's like a, it's like a sci-fi drama, basically. But there's one big twist in it about. Um, yeah, it's spoiled. No, Go it's ahead. fine. It's up. It's it's right at the beginning, so you kind of you don't you don't know what the twist is, but you know what's going on at the beginning. The main character has a daughter who is ill, and who is like <coughs> terminally ill, and like what happens and and what you find out towards the end of the movie is like really not just like as sad as. A child being ill and passing away, but like, there's implications of if you knew that the child would be ill, would you still have the child? It's like it's just gut punch, rip my heart out and stomp on it. And it's a fantastic movie, but you you got to be in the right headspace if you want to jump in there and 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 watch it because it'll mess you up. I actually watched part of it, and when they get the scenes of like kids being sick and in the hospital and dying, I'm like, I'm out. I think that's, the, that's like personal to me. So. You pick. You pick to the topic. <clears throat> no, 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 no. That's <laughs> horrible stuff. All of mine are horrible things. My number oh, three is, is less horrible, but really sad because it's an animated movie, and I could have put a lot of animated stuff on here. I agree. Actually, animated movies have really been going for the yeah. especially Pixar. Yeah. Ever since oh. Lion King, they're like, oh, we can up that. So this is Pixar. What do you think the movie is? Toy Story. No. no although I could up. Put, no, uh, I could have put up too. Oh yeah. I put Inside Out. I haven't seen that one. Yeah. We're just spoiling you right left. Wow. Right. <laughs> so inside out, and this movement happens, it's not even the end of the movie, although the end of the movie made me sad too. In the middle, have you seen Inside Out? No, I watched it 20 minutes and it sucks. It does not. It's one of the it best pictures movies. It's very bad. <laughs> the death of Bingo Bango in the movie. <sighs> Bingo Bango? I, I'm you want me to feel sad? For somebody named Bingo Bango See, I'm dying? bringing you back out of your funk. I'm telling you, if you've seen the movie, you know what that is, because what the movie does is she's, it, it's showing all her emotions and stuff, and the one emotion finds her imaginary friend that this girl had as a child. And it's bingo bango. It's like there's an imaginary friend, and at some point, he has to go away because she's too old to have an imaginary friend. Oh, it's like a drop-dead Fred moment. Yes, it is. Oh. Although not as dumb as okay. Drop Dead Fred. <laughs> okay. Wow. Wait a minute. <laughs> We're in the mood on that one. <laughs> Stop, drop that friend off. Oh, oh. I think the friend is called Bing Bong. Oh, Bing Bong, sorry. 
Bingo. Oh, bing his, bong is properly sad. He said, bingo bango. Sorry, I don't know why I said bingo. Can die all day, but bing bong, you don't mess with bing bong. Anyway, I think it's a super sad moment, and it really caught me off guard, too. Like, when it happened, I was like, oh, no, no. Anyway, my number three. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, my number three, the one almost was going to be... Um, this one you actually know. As opposed to our two. I do. This one I've seen. Good. You've seen that this scene one, at least. This one, mine was going to be um, the other guys when The Rock and Samuel Jackson leapt their death. That was just <laughs> very <laughs> beginning of that. It got me. It got, did you not see that? What are you talking about? Sa the other guys? You never saw the other guys? I've seen a piece of it also. It's they also die in the first five stupid. minutes. It's, fan it's fantastic. Oh, okay. I'm so happy about them dying. All right. <laughs> this one, here's the thing. It used to bother me as a kid seeing animals die more than Here we go. I know people. what this is. No, this is, that is Marley. Be... No, man, that got me. Is it a horse? <laughs> that dog died twice. Is it old Yeller? No, you guys are gonna laugh at me for this, but for some reason, it's the more the idea behind it. We watch one movie, and my older daughter leaves the room every time John Wick's dog dies. Wait, oh, what? One... I'm telling you. No, Here's 100%. the thing. Okay, that is that is top ten. Because it's not just the dog dying; it's the fact that his wife just died. She's yeah, like, that's true. you need something to love. You're watching the dog and his wife die. Right. You yeah. watch all that go again, and it the whole four movies make sense. It's like, she's like, listen, you're going to get back into that life. Give you something to love. And it's a beagle. Didn't get him a pit or something. It's just little cute dog. Puppy. And it's like, man, you got to no, kill I them agree. all. You, no, I agree. I, no, I think he didn't kill them enough. Yes, I know. You know what I mean? I want to see. I think it worked out, okay? I don't no, want to. I, I think there should be a director's cut <laughs> in which he somehow talks to the Sorcerer Supreme <laughs> so he can bring them back and kill them again. Bring in Liam Neeson and be like, listen, let's do this again. Yeah, it's. Who's Liam it's, Neeson? Why Liam Neeson? The I'll bring him in. Is he the Sorcerer Supreme? No, I'm saying he kills people good. Oh, he's got a set of skills. <laughs> he does. Not yeah. like John Wick, man. Uh, no, but that one, it got me more than I thought it would be, to the point to where that's the hardest part of that movie to watch. <laughs> it actually worries him every time a dog shows up in one of John Wick movies. So I like, know. Oh, no. Uh, no, you know they will. <laughs> you know what I mean? I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, oh, so anyway, that's it. My number two is me, right? Yeah. Yep. Is also a dog thing. Which, again, it's like I can see a movie and then... 30 people get mowed down. Yes. I'm like, mm, that's some good I filmmaking. I understand this. <laughs> and then, like, somebody hurts one mouse, and you're like, no movie, you've gone too far. <laughs> I'm calling Hollywood right dog? now. This is not a great movie. This is like an action-y movie, you know what I mean? <clears throat> but there's one scene that it wrecks me, and that is from I Am Legend. Oh, no! That's on a lot of lists. Have you guys seen uh, that movie? Yes, but I forget. His only companion is that dog. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's, actually, that's bigger, though, because that's not like a lot of people get killed and then the dog dies. It's his only There's, friend in the world. It's like the only person around yeah. is a dog. I know, but it's also a dog. So in the, like a loyal dog to him, yeah. you're like, oh, my goodness. And he's like... Again, the dog gets hurt, and he's, like, holding it, but in this world, it's like, you know, monsters, vampires, whatever. So, like, the dog is gonna turn also. It's a really heart-wrenching scene yeah. with him, like, holding the dog, you know, and the dog is, like, they make the, they, they make the dog in the whole movie up to that point seem like really ta a tactical attack dog whose name is Sam. He's a killer. <laughs> da -da -da. And then he's holding the dog. He's like, come on, Samantha, girl, come on. And I'm like, no, dude. You played me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, God, my goodness. No, That's a I, good one. I would have thought of that. I hate this top three, Tom. I hate it. All right. My number two. <sighs> my number two is a, a more obscure movie, and it's, it's almost, it's one of those, uh, I always get weepy in, uh, I think this is a Sparks, Nicholas Sparks movie, I think. You know, he does all those. <gasps> oh. Nicholas Sparks. Now, what is his name? The guy who does all the. The Notebook? Yeah, The Notebook. Yeah. Is that yeah, Nicholas Sparks? Nicholas Sparks, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Is it his? Is it a notebook? It isn't a notebook. Is it the Big Fish? No, it's A Walk to Remember. So I don't know. I you guys have probably one. not seen this one. Huh? Ah. A Walk to Remember is where this, this kid who's like a jerk job <clears throat> meets a fairly demure girl and they fall in love, right? Whatever. But he finds out she's dying halfway through. So is everybody else. I mean, he, he's, the kid's not the brightest. Oh, you mean like quicker than normal? <laughs> Such a jerk. I'm just asking. He's trying to lighten the move with levity. <laughs> 
I've never seen this movie. Nicholas Sparks. But there's just some, there's some really good moments, and there's a moment like he and his dad aren't getting along right, and he wants to marry her. She's like gonna die like very early, like in her early twenties or whatever. So it's a degenerative d disease, and he decides to marry her anyway, right? Just because. Um, spoiler alert: she does die. Okay. All right. <laughs> Oh, I thought um, it was like a twist ending. But there's a moment where, like, he finds out his dad's been paying for all her medical bills and everything. And he just goes, and he opens the door, his dad's there, and he just cries. Like, this big, tough guy crying. And it's like, ah. It's a great scene. Wow. I watched it again. I shouldn't have this morning. I was like, no, why did I do that? You watched it again? Just that scene. Oh, you looked up yeah. that one scene? That's yeah. like torture. That is. That's so inflicted. <laughs> That's That'd be rough. like looking up these <laughs> moments and just watching them out of context. Oh. To be fair, some don't work as well. I think my number one doesn't really work you as well Big on Fish, its own. Nicholas Spar Sparks too? No, that's a Big Tim Burton is... movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a good movie, though, too. That is a very sad, good movie. Yes. <sighs> All right. Number two, uh, two is like one of those that saw it grow up again. And it's going back, it's those four words that you say anytime. And it's the, oh, I'll Captain, right my Captain. Oh. I mean, that part of Dead Poet Society, for me, it's great. I remember seeing that everything that led. It's funny how the one of the students dies, and that does not get me nearly as much as when this teacher that just gave these spoiled brats everything and then just walks out. You guys have seen it, right? Yes. Yeah, and it's just when they all stand up. I love that scene. That for me was one of the most emotional scenes I think in movies. You think it's one of the saddest scenes? Yeah, it was sad because he sit there and he committed everything to the kids and then just walks out. For yeah, me, I, I, I agree with him. I think that's like an emotional I mean? like, scene. I wouldn't yeah. consider it sad. I don't know. I was sad. I guess just... it depends how you like yeah, how you perceive it. Yeah. What side you see it from. Yeah, so really, that from a teacher's me. perspective, I'm like, oh, you're getting out of Oh, good. so you saw him as he gets to go home <laughs> you don't and not to, wear these you don't brats have to, anymore? You, don't have to work you were like, school anymore. <laughs> good job, dude. You saw the guy skipping down the hallway as these kids are on their <laughs> desk going, oh, captain, my captain. They all got expelled, probably. So. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. No, it's a good. It, uh, I don't want to get yelled at for hate on Dead Poet Society. No. no, no, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, number one. My number one is from one of my favorite movies of all time. It is from... Give a hint. Make him a hint. Give me the what? Give, give, give us a hint. Uh, it. It's one very sad scene with a monologue over it. This doesn't actually narrow things down. <laughs> There's a lot of those. Yeah, I guess so. Um, it's from the Shawshank Redemption. Ooh. In the middle? It's in the middle somewhere, yes. Yeah, it's, oh. it's all the, the Brooks <clears throat> scene. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I actually, a few days ago, my kids were from Codger in Town. I was like, they need to watch Shawshank Redemption. Seen it? It's not That's streaming good. free anywhere. Oh, okay. It's not? Like on okay. anything right now. I was going to show it to them. <sighs> That's another great ending, too, by the way, but yeah. The ending's very happy. So yeah. at least there's that. The, the ending is like super good. joyful. Yeah, good. The ending is not like another gut punch, yeah, but there's no. several in the movie. It is. But the one biggest <clears> one <throat> is the Brooks character, who's an oh, old, yeah. kindly man, who's like a lifer in prison. And basically, like, a few years because before he's going to die anyway, probably, they release him. He gets, you know, uh, paroled out or whatever. And it's <laughs> just, he is institutionalized. He doesn't really understand how the world works, and he's just kind of sad. And it is, like, and he writes a letter to his friends in jail. Yeah. It's just, and, and, well, I'm not going to spoil it if you've never seen it. You've never seen it? I've seen it, no. Oh, okay. I can't remember that part. I remember... How could you not remember that part? It's like a major focal point of the movie. Because oh. then when Morgan Freeman's character oh, is released, he goes through the same thing, and you're like, oh, no! Oh, okay. And he writes See, it with a pen, with, yeah. a, with a knife. Brooks was here. Oh, my goodness. It's oh. so oh, sad. Such a well-written. Now Stephen King, too, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a Stephen, it's Stephen King. King. That's yeah. It blew movie. my mind when I heard that. And it isn't the only Stephen King Moment I considered. I considered Green oh, Mile. Oh, I did too. That I, I that was on the Green Mile. is pretty. Yeah. All right. My number one, and <clears throat> I apologize because this movie is so. I've been debating showing this to my kids, but I'm afraid because it's so. Because I want them to learn about the Holocaust. Oh, is it the Boy in the Striped Pajamas? Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Who? The ending of that movie is. That's. Oh my rough, God. man. Oh. You see that mom running out, <laughs> looking for her son. And you're like, no, they would not do that. This is a movie, right? Like, the movie was, the movie's pretty, the movie's kind of like, and they do this, 
It's actually an wow. interesting way. This this has <clears throat> been done several times. Jojo Rabbit did it, and what's the movie where the guy pretended to be? Life is beautiful. Life is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Where they like put this kind of ha ha funny stuff right in front of something that's terrible. Yeah. And horrific. And <clears throat> and uh, wow. going striped pajamas is that the whole way? Like he's there. He's like, oh, who's that kid in striped pajamas? Friends, and they the friends. whole movie and they're friends and everything. You're like, maybe he'll help that kid escape or something. Because he's so innocent, the kid. He doesn't know <clears throat> anything about what's going on. Right. And then the ending is just like, it's probably one of the worst endings of any movie oh, ever. Oh, it is. But, but. That's a, that's a watch it's, once and be like. Phew. You're right, I haven't seen it. No, no I've seen it I twice. don't remember the ending very well because I've also only seen it once a long time ago and I was it's like. It's heavy. It is, but no. it's really, yeah. really sad because especially as a parent. I get, like I said, kids gets me, so. There's a lot of movies, though. There's a lot of Holocaust movies that would. Easily make this list. But I agree. It's like, how do you not? You know what I mean. But well, uh, I only put one. I mean, I could put Schindler's List. I could have put Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. Never um, seen Jojo Rabbit. I mean, that's a Holocaust movie. Uh, Jojo Rabbit's not really Holocaust. It's about the Nazis. It's about though, the yeah. Nazis, oh. though. Wow. There's the like the Gray <laughs> Zone is a little known Holocaust movie that's really affecting. Uh, Any of the Anne Frank movies. The Anne Frank yeah. movies, yes. So, yeah. All right, what's your number one? Hey, right, my number one again. Bring us up again, man. Give me some Being like. how Okay, here's the thing. It's like being, again, a, a parent and just like being a girl dad. I'm telling you, the I Love You 3000 when in the Iron Man moment at the end of Endgame, that for me was rough. You oh, know, when she's watching. Yeah, yeah, when she's watching her dad right there. Because the whole thing at the beginning, you know, I Love You 3000, when it pulls back in at the end, where for the final time she sees that video of him, that's rough, man. I mean, first of all, the whole Iron Man scene hits you, it hits you hard, you know. But it's also a superhero film. It's like okay, you know, it's sad, but I like where she's like, you can rest. Yeah, and you're like, huh. <laughs> that whole it is so, it's such a good like ten minutes of just like wow, a good finale. For me, that was really good. You know, just her at the end watching that the the finality of that, you know. And the fact that, you know, he wanted to be his dad his whole life, and he finally was, and gave that up. That's really good for me. Yeah, I really enjoyed that hmm. whole story arc there. wasn't expecting that one, but okay. I know. I'm like, yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of sad moments in the Marvel movies. There, well, there are. In the, in the original, not in Phase 5. Has anything in Phase 5 hit you at all? It has not. <laughs> like, they, they, like, forgot about the emotional parts of it. No, yeah. The Holes guy in the... Ant Man, <laughs> wasp. I have holes now. That's about it. Wow. Quantum Mania. That's all I remember. The only only funny part, in like all Phase Five. Oh, I have holes. holes. I have holes. <laughs> and he's like, oh, good for that guy. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing, right? Like, I liked that movie for the most part. It wasn't as good as the other ones. No. But there was no emotional moments in it. Even the point at the end, I was like, oh, they're gonna leave him stuck in his universe. Nah. I just yeah. hope they don't bring back Iron Man at this point. That they would really keep talking cheapen, about it. I hope they That would they cheapen don't. that no, a I lot. I agree. You know what they should bring back? The X-Men! Stop wasting our time! Sorry. That's... No, it's back. X-Men 97, man. That's true. Yeah. I will tell you, I put no Hallmark movies on this because those just intentionally get you every time. My wife pulls me in and watching those, and it's... Any movie to... designed to make you they feel bad. Are. Like, uh, yeah, that's the thing. There's a lot of those, to be fair. But, yeah, this was a tough list to put together, just three. And you guys thought Tom a great was saying too, earlier, right? he could have done a top 100, and I'm like, yeah, 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 there's a lot of these. Oh, my goodness, it's just... And I saw, I looked up, like, to remind myself of moments I've seen, like, oh, sad scenes from movies. And sure enough, some of these kept coming up, I'm like, I I'm not watching that one. Really? <laughs> you know, some of these game movies, I'm just not interested in going and watching, like, that I've not seen. But I will not now. Like, Marley and me keeps coming up, and I'm like, Dude, nah, that, I get it. I'm good. That dog dies twice. Why? And just, like, he wanders off, and the family's like, oh, he wandered off. They wander off to die. And then he didn't, because you get this cry. Like, oh, okay, he's all right. Let's, you know, let's kill him again. It's just... Really? Oh, oh it's geez. rough. All right, well. My Girl? You see that one? No, what? I saw it come up. I don't know what That's an that old, is. old movie. Yeah. But That's a rough one, and too. I, it, it, in watching it now... It's not as good, but at the time, you're like, that's the Home Alone kid. Yes, I know. You killed him. The only thing you yeah, I think my next one would be uh, The Green Mile would be my number four. Oh, I, he, I definitely considered that one. When he doesn't want it over there because he's afraid of the dark. 
before the execution scene. Oh, my God. Man, that solidified that actor. as like, like almost put Iron Giant on there. See, I'm seeing that in the chat, and that bothers me because, I have, like I said, I have not seen Iron Giant. You need to watch Iron Giant. I'm not going to tell you what happened. The more that. sad you guys are talking about it, no, it's not. No, no, it's a great movie. you got to watch it. It's okay. It's just a <sighs> big metal doofus. I mean, you're fine. Oh, man. All right. You will cry. Though. Well, that is our top three. <sighs> Press the right button here, Joey. Come on, party. Hey folks, welcome back to another Gateway Corner. Today we're going to take a look at another game that I've had a lot of success with in Gateway type situations, and that is The Art Project. No less than six different scenarios that you can play in this game. And it is really awesome that way. All of them have little different nuances uh, to how the game plays. So that's one of the cool things about it as well. There's a lot of replayability in it. Uh, you can play up to six players. It is a cooperative game, which is an important facet of this game because I think cooperative games really shine well in gateway situations. We'll talk more about that in a few seconds though. So basically the theme here is that the White Hand is, is a group of uh, cultural terrorists, I guess you could call it, maybe. Uh, and they're trying to steal these works of art. Uh, and take them away and all of this other kind of stuff. And we, as the art project, are trying to save these pieces of art. You win the game by simply saving all of these pieces of art. You could lose the game, though, in no less than three different ways. The first way is, is if this card, uh, uh, and it's basically a tile, it's not really a card, it's uh, basically placed at the uh, bottom of the deck. If that card comes up and you, at the end of that round, you have not saved all seven pieces, then you are done. Uh, another way that you can win is if exactly one player loses all of their health at any given point, that will end the game in a loss as well. And then the final way is that if the hand overruns three of the cities uh, on the board, before you are able to save all of these, then that will also end the game in a defeat. The only way that the art project can win is by saving all seven of these. And it's a really neat cooperative game that has a lot of cool mechanisms in it. It has great pieces, great artwork, great table presence, and uh, that's why I believe it works so well as a gateway game. I think cooperative games in gateway situations work very, very well, and there's one specific reason, and I think it's because it alleviates that need of competing with the other people at the table. When you enter into a situation with any level of anxiety, putting that anxiety up against or into a competitive situation just heightens that anxiety. So I think uh, that's why cooperative games are so uh, good in gateway situations because it takes away that, co that competitive element that heightens people's anxiety more often than not. Uh, especially if they're in a group of people that they don't know yet. And this is a great cooperative game that doesn't have hard mechanisms. You can teach this game you can teach how to play this game in probably five to 10 minutes, and then you're off to the races. And uh, because it's cooperative, you can help each other, you can talk about things, you can uh, talk things through, and it's not necessarily about playing the game exactly the way it was designed. At that point, in a gateway situation, you want people to simply have fun. So that is that. Go check out Art Project for your next gateway situation, and we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. All right, so. You nailed it, bro. Somebody. It good. You will be. And I totally redeemed myself. <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, so anyhow, um, so expansion. Someone pointed out in my unboxing this week. Yeah. <laughs> so when I did my boring unboxing, I opened up a box of a game, and I don't remember what the game was, and I was like, here's the game, <clears throat> oh, all these expansions, and I sighed. And then I opened up another box from AEG with a bunch of expansions for the games, and I was like, woo, expansions. That's funny. Okay. Okay, so that may seem like I'm bipolar in that aspect right. with expansions, 
But you know what? There is a point. We, I was talking to some people about this at the gaming store on Tuesday night. Um, and there's a big difference to me when a game comes out and it is released with a bunch of expansions. Those expansions to me mean, mean nothing, really. Yes. Because they're, in my opinion, there's stuff they cut out of the game. Right. It was mm -hmm. too big, so they cut it out. <laughs> Or it's stuff that they were thrown together to make a stretch goal. Right. And or have extra stuff in the game. Or when they were play testing it, some guy was like, you know what you should do? And they're like, we will, in an expansion. Those expansions have not been, I mean, they might be play tested, but they're not publicly <clears throat> play tested. While a game that's been out for at least a year has had thousands and thousands of people play testing it, and people might say, I like the game, I wish this strategy wasn't so dominant, or whatever, or I wish there was more of this or something. And those expansions to me are more interesting. When I get a game with a bunch of expansions, the best thing to do, and I, I do this now, is I, just, I don't even look at the expansions. Right. I just take that game, I go play it. Then I look at the expansions, but it just feels like I'm jumping, I'm, it's like binge watching a game. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Again, I think what you're talking about here, which I think is 100% correct because of crowdfunding, where they give you the game, they give you all the seasons, you know what I mean? Yeah. Season one and two and three, yes, but you don't get to do that public, you don't get to crowdsource feedback and respond with an expansion. You don't get to see what That's thing people point. are saying. This is a thin, weak point. And you go, we can, we can patch that in an expansion. We can target that thing. This is, you know, I mean... Games will do this if if given time for that feedback to come back. But you're right. When the content comes out at the same time as the game, there's no space in there to respond. It's true because when you release a game, you have the widest group of playtesters you could ever imagine. Absolutely. And that's the way you're going to... But also, do you learn from not getting expansions? Like, I played Star Wars, a deck building game with you. Because, like, Star Realms, I loved. The more expansions I got, I stopped getting it out. It was too overwhelming. And then I played Star Wars deck building game. I'm like, okay, good. I'm going to go into this because this is it. And I'm sitting there like, oh, I wish I have expansions for this. And Z's like, you're doing it again. And it's like, you feel like you need expansions if you like a game. But well, we were talking about this phenomenon that we've both, you and I, found ourselves uh, experiencing. And that is, there's some game, we like that game a lot. We're so enamored with it that we want more content, which is natural. And then the more content we get, the longer setup gets, mm -hmm. the longer it takes to bring the game to the table, and therefore, the less the game comes to the table. And so there's an inverse correlation between how much you own for the game and then how frequently you play it. Yes. To the point that, well, if, I think you were mentioning some game, you were like, I'm just going to get another core box because it'll actually start play I'll actually start playing it again. Yes. And I agree with you 100%. There's that feeling of... This has bloated itself out of control, and while I enjoy owning it, and it's sort of like a, oh, I must own everything, you know, mindset, I'm also not playing it. So for me, someone mentioned in the thing, what about Marvel United, uh, Marvel United uh, expansions? And CMON has, for the most part, their last five or six expansion uh, games. Not all of them, but not, they have a plug and play aspect where there's a ton of content, and you can just take any of it. It doesn't matter. You're playing the game, and I got another juicy piece to put in here. Right. And I, that's coupled with when Marvel United announces stuff, I would be like, oh, you announced Captain Britain. I know who Captain Britain is. I'm excited about that character. I'm less excited about, you know, their white death zombie side, and they're like, we announced Chupaluka. I'm like, I don't know what Chupaluka is, whatever. But, right. the, but that being said, as Bingo much Bingo. as I love Marvel, and as much as I do love Marvel United, it is overwhelming to get all these boxes in and all this stuff. And even in the Dice Hour Library, we have sets that have, we have more than the starter set in them, but we don't put that much more in there mm -hmm. because it's just too much. But those also feel a bit like modules. You know? Yeah, I, like, I feel like it falls side. into a different camp. DC, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Marvel United and... Any of these where I'm a character and I just, like you said, plug and play feeling, it, I'm not the overhead, that feeling of one more expansion makes it this much bigger and another expansion compounds that. I don't get that feeling from Marvel United. I really don't. I can just open up a box, grab any one character, and I'm playing the same game with a new character 
There were no new rules learned, really. And, right. and I feel like 80% of the game is like that. If you get a new bad guy that has funky rules, yeah, you need to understand how they work. But generally speaking, I really will use all, like, all the content without that feeling of, oh, I need to sort out the one, oh, I shuffled in the promo cards. I don't want to teach with the promo cards. A couple of them are weird. Oh, wait, the symbol? Ignore that symbol, because it's actually for the expansion, but we're not, I'm, a, I'm not teaching the expansion. None of that stuff applies, and I like that. Yeah, yeah Jason says here, he thinks there's a difference between normal people and reviewers, because we have more games a month to try. Sure. There's a bit to that, yeah. but I'll push back at that, because I always, I would like to maintain, I'm a gamer who reviews. And I feel this way with this amount of content. I remember the first time this happened was before Kickstarter. I bought Duel of Ages, and it came with six expansions right out the gate. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let's throw it all in. That's a terrible way to do this stuff. Yeah. It's, and we're just not seeing it. So to this end, I'm actually dropping the expansion category from the Dice Tower Awards. Just really? because it's not just the reviewers. No. It's... There's expansions that come out and get a lot of notice. The Ark Nova expansion. Sure. Be, but mostly it's because the game. The games are that big. And companies are still are still kickstarting expansions that do really well, although half the time it's because they're also republishing the base game. Yes. Which is a big chunk of the money that's in there. Yeah. And then people just want this more, more, more. I'm not impressed when I see boxes all the way up to the ceiling. We're dealing with this that game we played on Monday. Primal. Primal. We don't know what to do with it because it's just boxes everywhere. Yes. And you could say, well, you should just buy one game or two games. And I don't disagree. You should just do that. But I would still, for me, I want to play this base game, play it, play it, and then maybe consider an expansion with the exception being, oh, here's another character. I can put that character in. And then I'm, I'm cooler with it. The problem is the average game, and I assume for most people, an expansion isn't going to feel special or like a refreshment on the base game because A, you're playing it immediately with the expansion, or B, you haven't really played the base game enough to then put an expansion in and go, I'm seeing new strategies, or I'm seeing yeah. new flavors, or I'm noticing ways that I used to do things in this game that no longer are viable. I need to relearn my strategies. How satisfying. That's not happening. That's a good you're, point. You get it too early. You know what I mean? Yeah, like when Expansion's released a couple years later, you're like, finally, yes. It, more, it breathes more life into Especially it. Especially if you've played a lot. Then you're yeah. like, wow, this is different. You notice subtleties. You notice these things that a developer and designer have taken the time to put in there as a response to what people thought of the game. You get none of that subtlety, none of that nuance when it's the you know, fire hose approach. Right. That's the, that's the thing. So I agree with you guys, yeah. Yeah, I think my biggest thing nowadays is I like expansions, but they feel like a pain in the neck for the most part. Unless it's something... I love expansions because I like playing with new people. And maybe yeah. that's a, a difference between me and... Uh, someone comes to the game meetup, I'm like, hey, jump in this game. Okay, I need to take out this puff. I need to take this out. And you yes. mentioned that earlier. That's, I find that to be... Annoying, or the more expansions in the game, the more rules I have to remember, too. Yeah. And then there's the whole, which book is this one in? Here's a dumb yeah. one from years ago, Small World. And I really love Small World. Mm -hmm. Small World came with reference sheets for all the powers. And then there was an expansion that added more with another reference sheet. So now you had two. And then another. And I was like, okay, what do the werewolves do? Hang on, look on the Where different shoes. Yeah, what, what and, and, expansion? And that, it's just slightly annoying. And then if you play with someone who's not played before, you got to quick undo all that. I'm not saying expansions are bad. I like expansions. There's, I'm reviewing the space base expansion next week. You know, I, I which yeah, yeah. The, and there's a lot of good expansions, but I get less excited about them. I think I've definitely changed my tune on expansions. And, like, which ones, not, not what I think of them necessarily, but which ones I need personally to own. You know right. what I mean? Because if it's going to affect my ability to bring that game to the table, to play it more, then it's actively hurting me instead of helping me. 
Yeah, it looks mm -hmm. good and I feel nice when I open it and get to see the expansion in the box and look through the cards or whatever. Every time I think of playing it, though, it doesn't come off the shelf. That's hurting me, not helping me. Now, there is a positive thing, because someone just said that it's crowd surfing a, a, a source of the problem to some degree. But I will say, if you do like that variety in a single game, you're living in a golden age. Yes. Like, if that you like true. a game, I'll be like, mm -hmm. oh, man, are you in luck? Like, no kidding. I just had someone I knew from Korea, a pastor that I worked with in Korea from 15 years ago, and they just emailed, they Facebooked me, and they said, have you ever heard of this game called Dominion? And I was like, have I? And they're yeah. like, we've been playing it nonstop. And I was like, well, good. I got news for you. There's more if you, you want. And that's exciting to be that you can do that. If you like play a game, you're like, I love this. I played this game 40 times. I'm like, did you know there's an expansion? I've said that to people before, and it kind of like blows their mind. Yeah. And I feel so happy about that, that you have this extra content. I just don't need it all at the same time out the gate. When I back Kickstarters now, I just back them for the base game. But when we did have the, the category for expansions, the Dice Tower Awards, did we allow those expansions in the Kickstarter bloat? Well, like, sure, but I mean, how are you supposed to exclude them? That's the thing. It's like, because that is like, I still view that as the core. I don't know. Well, it's not, though. You know, I you know. can play without. That's an expansion. And then yeah. it's the one that's included in the box count. Right, so where's that line? But the fact of the matter is it's just really hard. I, I used to make a top 10 expansions list every year. I don't know if I did that last year. If I did, it was shorter because I just don't play as many. Huh. Um, part of that is because, yes, there are more games coming out, but I just kind of gravitate away from expansions. I kind of would like to play more of the game, unless it's, again, more stuff. More Wingspan Birds? I'm in. More, you know, characters for, you know, Blood Rage? Yeah, I'll try that out. Here's an expansion that totally takes a right turn from a game I love. I'm sitting there going, "That's it." I don't know if mm -hmm. I want to play that or not. I'm already happy with the game. Like for example, we have that Iki expansion. I yes. love Iki. It's in my top 100. I'm like, I don't know. And then now that I say that, I'm going to get six comments. People going, "You got to try an expansion. It's amazing." Maybe, but I'm still exploring that base game. I'm with you. There are some expansions that don't feel like expansions to me, like Marvel Champions characters. When I buy right. a new character. I'm not rewriting the game, and that's more what it is. An expansion that comes along and jumps in there and tweaks some of the DNA of the game, mm -hmm. those are the ones that get me, that I have to go back again, that stay on the shelf, because I'm like, oh, i got to sort this out. I feel like I'm doing you know, DNA strand sorting over here to get back to what it originally was. And that's the thing, too. You get the expansion, you mix it in, and because we teach a lot of new people, I end up sorting the thing out nine times out of ten anyway. And that's, like, yeah, because I look at that the modules like that one also, Summoner Wars. And also, I think Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, you've got those factions that you can put in and out. I take out the undead, all that. But, yeah, they don't, they're not game-breaking. There are some expansions, though, that I'm like, it changes the game a lot. And then I'm like, I'm never playing a game without this. Sure, that definitely there are, happens. That, there's some that are... Fantastic, but they're almost always the kind that the designers and the developers saw a response to the game right. and laser targeted some issue or, you know, small weakness or whatever in the game. They were like, oh, you don't like the way uh, progression works? Boom. Yeah, this like, is how you do it now. Like we Vita tweaked culture. it. The yeah. game's too long? Boom. Like, it, it's very targeted laser surgery. And then you got a reason to exist. But then you wonder if they're going to tweak it with an expansion or come out with a second edition. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> Uprising. Yeah. They're Uprising. I yeah. guess so, yeah. All righty. Well, that's just something. I mean, we talk about expansions all day long. Mm -hmm. but, all right, folks. Well, you know what we're doing here in the Dice Tower? We're moving a studio from one spot to another spot. Mm. That's a lot of work. It's a lot. But, we, but, it's, but it's working. It's going to be nice when it's done. Yeah, so anyhow, we got that, and we'll be back later on playing a game. We'll see you then. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Joey Evans. I'm Z Garcia. What's up, Joe? It's you next. Counterclockwise. The button.